Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I have a master's degree in nursing education. I'm also a family nurse practitioner. In today's video, I will be going over how I manage my ADHD without medication. Now, these are just some tips that have worked for me and I'm trying to pass them on to you. If you need medication, make sure that you continue to take it. This video is purely for educational purposes only. Please do not stop taking your medication if you're currently on medication and always consult with a healthcare provider. Keep in mind that the latest diagnostics statistic manual, which is a DSM, did away with the label of ADD and just all labels it as ADHD. So I started taking medication for ADHD when I was in my master's degree nursing program for nurse educator because it was writing so many papers and I just couldn't focus. It was a struggle for me. So I went to a psychiatrist, we talked spoke about my symptoms. I officially got diagnosed with ADHD, even though again, like as a healthcare professional myself, I kind of always suspected I had it because I just, I'm a little different than other people. So the reason why I decided to no longer continue taking ADHD medication was because I noticed that what was prescribed to me was Adderall. And I noticed that it just made me very irritable. Um, it had a lot of physical side effects like the tachycardia, fast heart rate that I didn't particularly enjoy. Um, and I just feel like it changed my personality. It didn't work for me very well. Like I could sit down and focus for eight hours and just write my papers and go away. So it was very effective, but I just didn't, the side effects were a bit too much and uh, I just, it wasn't for me. So there's a few things that you can do to help you manage your ADHD more effectively and without necessarily medication. So tip number one would be to eat healthier. Um, me personally, I'm a vegan. I've been vegan for about 15 years now, but you can be a vegan and eat junk food. Like you can, so just because you're vegan doesn't mean that you're healthy, but um, avoiding a lot of sugar, a lot of processed foods, avoiding simple carbs. So I always have, for, for breakfast, I always have my protein shake with almond milk. Um, the brand that I use is Orgain. I buy it on Amazon, it's organic protein. It was actually formulated by a physician that battled uh, cancer himself. So I eat pretty healthy, lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, another thing is staying hydrated, drinking plenty of water. Now, I'm a hot mess. Maybe I don't look like I'm a hot mess, but I also have Sjogren's, which is an autoimmune disorder, and it basically dries out my eyes, it dries out my mouth, everything. I think of like a little raisin that all the water has been sucked out of it, and that's what my body feels like. So I have to stay hydrated, not only for ADHD, but for my Sjogren's. But water is very, water helps you with fatigue. If you feel tired, it could be because you're dehydrated. Our sense of thirst doesn't kick in until we're dehydrated. So a sense of thirst is not a good indicator if we're getting enough water or not. So drink plenty of water, it helps keep you alert, and um, not mentally fatigued. The other thing that really works for me is having routine. Steve Jobs believed in something that was called decision fatigue, where it says that we only have a certain amount of choices and decisions to make in the day before we get exhausted or we just get decision fatigue and we don't wanna do anything else, right? So um, with ADHD, you have a million thoughts running through your mind. So what you can do is to set a routine so that you know what you're doing every morning. So for example, example, I'll pose you this question. What do you think saves more time? Eating the same thing every morning for breakfast or, or not knowing what you're going to have for breakfast? So, you know, this may not, this may not work for you, but I don't mind routine. And every single morning I have the same thing. Like I already said, I have my protein shake with half a banana and, um, almond milk. That's it. I know when I wake up in the morning, what I'm going to eat. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to be like, Hmm, what am I gonna have for breakfast? And then spend like 10, 15 minutes thinking about what am I gonna have for breakfast and looking through the cupboards. So that helps with not having that decision fatigue. On my days off, I also work out at the exact same time every time. So I wake up and I know that I have a workout class. I like to work out in the morning um, because it just gets my day off right and exercising helps strengthen the the neurochemicals that help with focus. So um, on my days off, I work out at the exact same time. So I know I have to wake up, have a protein shake, go to class. So on days that I work, I have like several outfits. And again, take the tips that work for you. And if you don't like them, you don't have to follow them. But again, this is what works for me. So I have the same 
type of pants that I will wear to work. So I have like three, three or four pairs that I, they're comfortable, I like how they fit. And for work, I'll wear the same thing. So I teach mental health, and a lot of times I take students to the mental health facility. So I have to wear clothes that is not, that's very neutral, that's not loud, that may not agitate the clients, that's not form-fitting. So I will wear the same thing. I'll wear um, black pants, a black scrub top, and it just makes my life easier. That I know that's kind of like my uniform. If you have a uniform, you don't have to sit there and decide like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna wear today? I have no idea what I'm gonna wear, what I'm gonna do. I also wear the same pair of shoes for work. It's also more hygienic, especially in the medical field or the nursing profession. I don't want to wear shoes that I wear in the hospital at other places, but it also helps me like I know every time I work, I wear the same pants, the same top, the same, uh, the same shoes so I can get um, ready quicker. Like I mentioned before, exercise is so important. There have been studies that show that exercise does help with not only depression, but anxiety, focus. So by exercising, you are enhancing the good neurotransmitters or the good neurochemicals that help with focus. I try to exercise at least three to four times a week. Like I said, even with my autoimmune condition, when I don't exercise, I can feel the difference in my body. Believe it or not, my eyes get more dry, my mouth gets more dry when I don't exercise. So exercise is a priority for me. Tip number six is I will pick out everything that I have to wear the next day and I will pack my gym clothes or books or everything that I need to take the next day, the day before. It significantly affects the amount of time it takes for me to get ready and it's made me be late before. So, like I said, even though I'm wearing the same thing, it's important to, I pick it out out of the closet, I have it set so that I don't have to worry about it in the morning and I can just put it on, right? Um, like I said, when I don't do this, I can, I'm, I'm running, like I'm, I'm rushing to get there on time. Also, um, if, I'm, if I know I'm working out the next day, I'll pack all my gym clothes, the towels that I need, because I do a lot of yo the hot yoga and the Pilates. Um, I will pack the books that I need. If I'm teaching students, I'll pack the books and the resources that I need, because nothing worse than you know you're running late and you still have stuff that you have to get ready. And with ADHD, you always feel like you're forgetting something. So I'm always like, did I, did I, did I put this in there? You know, so that. Tip number seven is I leave my essentials in the car. Obviously use common sense, like stuff that's not perishable, right? What I mean by my essentials is I leave my IDs that I use for work. I leave my work keys, not my car keys. I have two separate keychains. I leave my work keys in my car. I leave my ID in my car because why do I do this? trial and error, all the times that I would get to work and I'm like, oh man, where's my ID? Or I would spend an extra 10 minutes in my house looking for my keys or my ID. Um, so to cut all that out, I was like, I'm going to put this in the same spot every time. So I have a designated place in my car where as soon as I get in the car, I put my, my keys there and I put my ID. So you have to be mindful and you have to think, but if you get into a habit, it's a lot easier to train your mind, even if you have ADHD. Tip number eight is meditate. Now I don't meditate as much as I should, but I do do it occasionally. And meditation is so effective for ADHD because it helps train your mind. You go to the gym to work out your muscles, right? And the more the, the, I've, I've seen guys that do complete transformations, right? They were scrawny as a kid. All of a sudden they start lifting weight and now they got biceps, like huge biceps, right? So just how you can train your body and transform your body, you can also transform your mind. And that's why meditation is so important. And you don't have to meditate for a long period of time. You could start out with meditating five minutes and then increase it to 10 minutes and so on and so forth. Tip number nine is I give myself extra time to get to places. I cannot reiterate this enough. I will tell myself if I have to be somewhere at eight, in my mind, I tell myself, okay, I have to be there at seven 
30. Because what I used to do is try to plan to get there by eight, but I'm not accounting for me probably leaving late, uh, walking time to get to that location. Uh, so it was just a hot mess. So I tell myself, okay, I have to be there at 7.30 if I have to be somewhere at eight. And I give myself extra time in the morning. Like I have to wake up earlier than probably most people will to make sure that I leave on time. Tip number 11 is sleep. And you wanna sleep at least seven to eight hours if possible, right? I know that people have two jobs or they have kids they have to take care of, but if possible, you have to take time for yourself, right? Put the mask on you before you try to help others. How can you help others if you're not at your best? So um, I really try to at least sleep seven to eight hours a night. There are things that you can do if you can't sleep. Like for me, what works for me is I need the, the room to be completely dark. Um, they, I don't use a white noise machine, but there are white noise machines out there if that, help, that helps lull you to sleep. There's apps out there like Calm. You can listen to a story before bedtime. You can try meditating before bedtime. I recently checked out an audiobook on Hoopla, which is H-O-O-P-L-A.com. And um, it's actually worked very well for me. It's a hypnotherapy tape on being decisive and uh, not procrastinating. So um, I've been listening to that and then just the guy doing the whole hypnotism thing just calms me down. A lot of times why we can't sleep with ADHD is because we have thoughts racing through our mind, like just running, running, running. So what you can do is you can write those thoughts down because if you write them down, your brain relaxes and it's like, a lot of times when thoughts are running through your mind, it's because your brain doesn't want to forget. So it keeps thinking it and thinking it and thinking it. And sometimes we call that ruminating. When we're just thinking the same thing over and over, especially if it's a bad thing, that's when it's rumination. But your mind doesn't want to forget. So it's like, remember this, remember this. But if you write it down, your brain's like, okay, it's somewhere. She's not gonna forget, I can relax. I can't emphasize how important writing things down is. So tip number 12 is start setting timers. I'm notorious for, I start washing dishes, then I remember I haven't done laundry. I'll go through the clothes in the laundry, but then I'll remember that my room, I needed to get something for my room. So I'll go to my room. And then next thing you know, I start scrolling through my phone. 20 minutes have passed and I just been scrolling for the past 20 minutes. I didn't realize where the time went. And then I go back to the kitchen. I'm like, oh man, I never finished washing the dishes. And then I walk by the hallway and I realize I never set, I never um, put the clothes to wash. So. Try to do one task at a time, especially if you have ADHD, multitasking is not work is not gonna work for you. Um, there's several books out there that say that multitasking is a myth. So set a timer and say like, for the next 10 minutes, I'm only going to wash dishes. For the next five minutes, I'm going to just load the washer and do the laundry. Also, if you're studying, you can set a timer for 30 minutes to an hour. And then after an hour, you can take a 10 minute break. You can stretch, you can walk. Try to move your body. If you have ADHD, your body wants to move and you have a lot of excess or fidgety and excess energy. Tip number 13 is maximize your on time. And what I mean by that is work when you're most productive. For me, my most productive time is somewhere usually in the morning time. I don't do well late at night. Some, I mean, again, know yourself. Occasionally, can I be productive late at night? Yes, I, right now it's 7.30 at night and I'm gonna be filming four videos at a time. Um, but I tend to be more creative and have a lot of ideas in the morning and then I get tired at night and I lose my motivation and then I just wanna like scroll through Facebook or watch TV. So know when you're most productive and schedule your activities accordingly for that time. Tip number 14 is know what helps you focus. For me, it's it depends. <laughs> For me, it depends. If I'm doing something that requires a lot of focus and concentration that I actually enjoy, I need silence because music will distract me. But it's a, but if I'm doing like, if I'm cleaning my room, which is a tedious task for me and I find very boring and I'm like, uh, then listening to something helps like an audiobook or listening to a podcast or even listening to bin binaural beats. So figure out if you're studying and you and you think that background music, classical music helps you, then listen to that. But if it distracts you, it's important to know yourself. Tip number 15 is block scheduling. So this I'm just starting to implement because a lot of times I feel like the day, you just feel like where did the day go, right? Like I have so many goals, so many dreams and aspirations. And that's one of the blessings of ADHD is your mind is always 
like if your mind is so creative, like you're always have projects and ideas, but you don't ever follow through with them, right? So I'm trying to follow through and I really want to follow through. And my goal is to one day be a full-time entrepreneur. So in order for that to happen, I have to put in a lot of work. And what I'm implementing with tip number 15 is block scheduling. So basically scheduling things pretty much every hour for the entire day. It doesn't mean you have to stick to it religiously that if you, God forbid, life happens, right? So don't be down on yourself if something happened and you deviated. But on days where I really know I need to be productive, I'm literally writing down everything that I need to do at what time, like between this and this time, I'm doing this and that and that time. If you noticed, I did highlighting because for me, highlighting works, it helps grab my attention. I remember when I was in school, I would use multiple, like different colored pens and I would write and I would, and I would highlight because all these things help me focus and help draw my attention and help me remember things. So try block scheduling, try it for a week. If you are have projects or goals and, or you just feel like you don't know where your day is going and you feel like you're not being productive, it's not that you're lazy, you're just maybe not planning correctly. So uh, for example, an example would be like nine to 10, I'm going to work out. 10 to 11, I'm gonna drive home, then shower. So between 10 and 11, I'm giving myself time to drive home and shower. Then 11 to 12, I'm gonna work on my YouTube content. Then 12 to one, I'll make and eat lunch. Then one to three, I'm going to work on my YouTube content, right? And between like one and two, I can take a 10 minute break. Between two and three, then I take another 10 minute break. Lastly, it, this applies to you if you're in school or if you work at a job, if you're an entrepreneur. Don't try to do everything yourself and actually focus on your strengths. So a lot of times in school, it's hammered into us like we need to work on our weaknesses. And that is applicable if we need to pass a test. Yes, we're gonna focus on our weakness. But the people that are super successful in life had, have actually harnessed maybe one thing that they're extremely good at. And that's what's projected them to the top. So if you're wasting time doing other things that you're not good at or that you hate or abhor, like life is too short for that. So have a team, ask for help. Don't try to do it all yourself. Um, for example, you know, being a homeowner, having a house, it, there's a lot of things to do with the house. So if you, if it's in your budget, you could get a robot vacuum. Um, you could talk to your partner about what chores they're going to do, what chores you're going to do. And then in regards to work, um, what I've started doing is even though I do enjoy editing, but it takes up a lot of time and I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel. So I've started outsourcing my editing to a few individuals in order to maximize what I want to do, which is grow my channel. And in order to grow my channel, I need to create content, but I can't create content if I'm spending you know, a lot of time editing videos, that's time I could be employing to create more content. So to summarize it all up, tips that have worked for me, number one, eating healthier, number two, drinking plenty of water, three, having a routine, four, wearing the same thing to work, and I don't mean the same outfit, I mean having like several outfits. <laughs> um, five is exercising, six is setting, getting everything I need the next day ready. Um, seven is leaving my ID and essentials in the car so I don't forget them or spend 20 minutes looking for them in the morning. Eight is meditating. Nine is giving myself extra time to get places. 10 is I have a planner. And for me, a physical planner works rather than the computer. I just, I don't know, it just is who I am. I'm old fashioned like that, I guess. Um, I love technology, but that's one thing that I've not been able to get used to is a digital planner. 11 is sleeping. 12 is setting a timer when doing tasks. Treat it like a game, like, oh, how many tasks can I complete? Or can I even beat my timer? I've been giving myself 10 minutes to do the dishes. Can I do it in five? Tip number 13 is maximize your on time. Tip number 14 is know yourself, right? Do you need silence to work or do you need background music? Tip number 15 is plan your time and create structure. Tip number 16 is have a team. Don't try and do it all yourself. Thank you so much for watching. That was a really long video. If you stayed till the end, I appreciate it so much. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Until next time.